Hello friends, press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for more such easy videos. In this video, I will be talking about the part 2 of living world. So in this we are going to basically focus on taxonomic categories. So let's understand that the highest taxonomic category is kingdom and the lowest one is species. So when we talk about start from top to the bottom, let's say we move from kingdom to phylum to class, then order, family, genus, species. In species you will find all the characteristics similar but in kingdom you will find very few characteristics similar. So it's a question of need that as you move from kingdom to species the similarity in the characteristic increases and when you move from species to kingdom the similarities in the characteristic decreases. How to remember this order just remember it is uh, King Philip came over for good soup. So when I say King Philip so it is kingdom phylum came over its class order for family good genus and soup is species. What is species basically we can say it is the smallest and basic unit in the system of classification. You cannot classify any animal after that. And the most important characteristic of species is that these animals or plants they can interbreed among themselves and all have similar characteristics. For example, Mangifera indica, Rosa sinensis, tuberosum, these are different species. Now let's understand what is the relation between all these characteristics. So what we can say that the concept of species was given by three different scientists in three different formats. First one was given was morphological concept, then biological concept and then came the modern concept. Who gave the morphological concept? It was given by Carolus Linnaeus, the father of taxonomy. What he told? Organisms similar in their morphological characters means they look similar then they are included under morpho species. But the biological concept as per Charles Darwin he said it is not morpho species. We need to understand that group of organisms that can interbreed among each other is the bio species. So bio species is important but later on came the modern concept of species that was given by Ernest Mayer. As per the modern concept, group of actually or potentially interbreeding natural population or closely resembling organisms is species. So when you look at the morphological characters or morpho species, it is just like similar looking. So when you look at a transgender, you look at normal human, they both appear to be same. But we cannot say that they belong to same characteristics. And when you talk about biological species, interbreeding can be done. But logically interbreeding is not going to always result in the offspring. So as per the modern concept what it says, they should be actually or potentially interbreeding and at the same time they should produce new one. Therefore modern concept of species is more accepted. When we try to divide now, we are going from bottom to the top. So we have species, genus, family, order, subclass, then we have class, we have division, we have subkingdom and we have kingdom. So species they will show all characteristics similar. So we have three species example Rosa sinensis, Esculentus and Cannabis. So when you study Rosa sinensis, Esculentus and Cannabis characteristics. So what we can say group of species having some similar characteristics they belong to same genus. Here all three belong to one genus that is Hibiscus. In that same way there are different genus like Malva, Cida, Gossipium. All these genus will show some similar characteristics. So they will be included in one family. The family is Malvesi. In that same way Liliaceae, Tiliaceae, these are also a family showing some similar characteristics. So they belong to the same order that is Malvales. In that same way Renales and Parietales are order. They belong to the same subclass. What is the similarity between all these three? They show exile placentation means their ovary can be cut in TS into different parts you can say from the same axis it means it is showing axial placentation when we talk about these three families they are included in same subclass that is polypetale what is polypetale free petals in that same way there is one more subclass that is gamopetale that is fused petal so polypetale and gamopetale they belong to same class that is called as dicotyledonate Dicot and monocot they have two different classes but they have some similar characteristics so they belong to one division that is angiospermae. 
Angiosperm has another division like say that in plant we have gymnosperm also but angiosperms and gymnosperm they have some similar characteristics so they belong to the subkingdom of phanerogamy phanerogamy is one subkingdom in plant we have different subkingdom like cryptogamy so phanerogamy and cryptogamy both belong to one kingdom that is plantae so when you look at these characteristics plants are autotrophic and phototrophic rosa sinensis is also autotrophic and phototrophic in that same way cryptogamy is also autotrophic and phototrophic but as we move from kingdom to species the similarities keeps on increasing but as i move from species to kingdom the similarities keeps on decreasing so this is how you can remember the flow chart of the taxonomic hierarchy let's understand the biological classification two kingdom classification was given by carolus linnaeus as per the two kingdom classification initially when classification was done first he classified all the living organisms into two parts that is kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia but the problem was these bacteria didn't got any place in the biological classification so came the three kingdom classification it was given by hackel as per hackel the three kingdoms are plantae animalia and protista in protista he included all the unicellular organisms but all the prokaryotic unicellular organisms were still not considered in protista it included all unicellular eukaryotic organisms so later on and most widely accepted biology classification was given by r h whitaker he gave five kingdom classification as per five kingdom classification of r h whitaker the kingdom of entire living world is divided into five monera protista fungi plantae and animalia we have kingdom monera we have kingdom protista we have kingdom fungi kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia question comes here what are the characteristics of these five kingdoms see in hackel's classification the bacteria were not given any place in linnaeus classification unicellular eukaryotes were not given any place but in whitaker's classification all monerans protistans fungus plantae and animalia they got a place only drawback was that the viruses didn't got any place in the whitaker's classification second euglena also which shows autotrophic as well as heterotrophic relation both they didn't got any place in the whitaker's classification let's understand whitaker's classification in detail so he first talked about kingdom monera so kingdom monera includes all the prokaryotes where a single cell without nucleus is doing all the functions from kingdom monerans evolved the kingdom protista kingdom protista is unicellular eukaryotic a single individual cell has to perform all the activity so it's a complexity of the organism you can say a complexity of the cell and when we move on to protista what we saw that some of the protistas they were showing fungus like characteristics so they were called like fungus like protist gave rise to kingdom fungi some protist were showing the plantae characteristic it was called as plant like protist it gave rise to kingdom plantae some protistans were showing animal like characteristic it gave rise to kingdom animalia that was animal like protist so kingdom protista is the most important kingdom because it gave rise to three different kingdoms like fungi plantae and animalia when you talk about kingdom fungi ecological role it becomes decomposers they are all feeding on dead and decaying matter mode of nutrition is absorption kingdom plantae these are producers providing food to each and every living organism on this earth and it is performing photosynthesis kingdom animalia these are consumers they feed on the producers so they take in the food by ingestion so it's a multicellular eukaryotes so when we talk about five kingdom classification remember monera monera has evolved into protista and protista has gave rise to multicellular kingdom fungi kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia question comes here what criteria were considered by whitaker for classifying these animals or the plants into five kingdoms let's see the criteria first criteria was cell organization whether that cell is a prokaryotic or a eukaryotic cell body organization whether that animal which he was studying is was unicellular or multicellular mode of nutrition whether that animal or the plant is autotrophic or heterotrophic then lifestyle whether it is a producer like autotrophic consumer like heterotrophic or decomposer saprotrophic 
So based on these characters, Whittaker came up with Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plante, and Emilia. In my next video, I will be discussing these kingdoms in detail. If you are new to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe. I will be bringing such easy videos for you. And don't forget to give a like. This is Sunil sir saying goodbye to you. Thank you very much.